Shalom. As we draw near to Rosh Hashanah, also known as the Feast of Trumpets, I want to take this opportunity to reflect on the true meaning and prophetic significance of this important day. Many know Rosh Hashanah as the head of the year or the beginning of the year, but biblically this is not true. In Leviticus chapter 23 verses 23 to 25, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. The beginning of the year on the first day of the seventh month? What's that all about? Rosh Hashanah is the first of three fall festivals. The Feast of Trumpets, Yom Kippur, also known as the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. These are not just ancient traditions. They are prophetic events with deep meaning for Israel and for all believers. Rosh Hashanah is a day when the children of Israel are called to come together for Yom Tu'ah, a day of trumpeting. It is a special moment for Israel to remember their covenant relationship with the God of Israel and to seek His presence in a time of repentance and reflection. This year, Rosh Hashanah will be observed on October 2nd. And around the world, especially in the land of Israel, Jewish people will gather in synagogues, blow the trumpets, and hold a holy convocation. It will be a Sabbath day, a day when no customary work is done, and the people of Israel will come together before the Lord. This day marks the culmination of a whole month of asking for God's forgiveness, a period called slichot in Hebrew, where they seek God's mercy, praying and repenting at places like the Western Wall. This sacred time leads into the ten days of awe, the days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, during which many Jews believe their faith is sealed and their names are written in the Book of Life. It is vital to understand the prophetic significance of Rosh Hashanah. Just as the first four festivals, Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, and Pentecost, were fulfilled during Yeshua's first coming, the last three festivals, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and the Feast of Tabernacles, will be fulfilled at His second coming. These feasts are not merely historical or cultural events. They are divine appointments set by God to reveal His plan of salvation for Israel and for the world. And as we read in the Bible, it is clear that certain events must still unfold before we see the fulfillment of the last three festivals. The prophet Daniel speaks in chapter 9 of 70 weeks that are determined for the people of Israel and for the city of Jerusalem. 69 of those weeks have already taken place, culminating in the coming of Yeshua who offered Himself as the perfect sacrifice. But the 70th week, the seven-year tribulation, is yet to come. This period is also for Israel and will be a time for great testing and revelation. During this tribulation period, Israel will undergo immense suffering. The prophet Zechariah talks about this time in several places. In chapter 13, verses 8 to 9, he speaks of two-thirds of Israel perishing, but one-third being brought through the fire and refined. This remnant, according to Zechariah 12, verse 10, will see Yeshua's returning, recognizing Him as the one they pierced. When He finally arrives back on earth with His feet on Mount of Olives, as prophesied in Zechariah 14, verse 4, 
all remaining Israel will recognize him as their Messiah. Then, as Romans 11 verse 26 states, all Israel will be saved. This fulfillment will come, guaranteed. The Feast of Trumpets, or Rosh Hashanah, will find its completion at the return of Yeshua to Israel and for Israel when He comes with His church. This will be followed by Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, when Israel repents. And finally, the Feast of Tabernacles, which will be fulfilled in the Millennial Kingdom when Yeshua reigns from Jerusalem and tabernacles with the people of Israel once again. Yes, just as the first four feasts were fulfilled in chronological order within a time frame of 50 days, so will the final three festivals be fulfilled in chronological order, but this time within just 20 days. And just as the first four festivals and their fulfillments centered around the nation of Israel, so will the final three. Now, if Yeshua is returning with His church, it begs the question, how did the church get with Him? Well, we must go back a step. For believers in Yeshua, the Messiah, we know that we are not waiting for any festival to determine whether our names are written in the Book of Life. The moment we put our faith in Yeshua, our names are already written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We are saved by God's grace, not by our own works. Once we are part of His family, we are immediately to put ourselves into a state of readiness for the day when the Messiah will return to the clouds to take us to be with Him during the rapture. There are some who say, there is the sound of a trumpet at the rapture, so it must be on Rosh Hashanah. But the trumpet heard when Yeshua comes to collect His church is a heavenly trumpet, not the sound of horns on the earth. So when it comes to the rapture, there is no reason to get excited about Rosh Hashanah. When you think about it, if we believe that the rapture must happen during this specific festival, we nullify God's promise that it could happen at any time. Yeshua Himself said, that no one knows the day or the hour of His return. We are to live in a state of constant readiness, understanding that it could come at any moment. Paul lived with this expectation of Christ's imminent return. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, he said, For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we, who are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. While some in the church may celebrate Rosh Hashanah, we must do so remembering Israel, we are called to pray earnestly for their salvation, for the veil to be lifted from their eyes, and for them to come to know the truth of the gospel. In these days of reflection and anticipation, let us keep our focus on Yeshua, our Messiah, and live in readiness for His imminent return. Let us not be swayed by sensationalism or false excitement, but instead stand firm in the promises of God, knowing that He is faithful and true. Thank you for taking the time to reflect on these profound truths with me. May God bless you as you continue to seek Him with all your heart, and may we together look forward with great hope and expectation for His glorious return.